Um, so generally, uh, as I could cover a bunch of these, um, I'll leave most of that uh, to folks to experiment with for themselves. Uh, the main ones I wanted to check though are uh, the accessory section here because there's some stuff in here that, um, I mean, aside from the all applications, uh, there's some stuff in here that's maybe a little bit, um, I don't want to say hidden, but like you don't find it as easily other places. Uh, so the archive manager is one. Um, this is for uh, for archived, uh, you know, folders and files and things like that. So if you have a zip folder or things like that, um, you know, the RAR or, you know, 7-zip, things like that, that's archives. Those are all archives. Um, and that's, this archive manager is the default software on Linux Mint to handle those kinds of things. Um, you also have a calculator here in case you need one. You can just pull it right up pretty easily. Uh, the character map for when you need to add special characters into documents or things like that, you can use that to uh, facilitate that. Um, this disks option here, it says manage drives and media. Uh, so it's for your, you know, your hard drives or, you know, any, if you have a disk, like a Blu-ray drive or something like that, whatever kind of disk drive, um, that's for that. Uh, this is one of the default uh, document uh, viewing softwares here that's installed here. I've also got a file renamer and it says you can rename files and directories. So um, there's some stuff in here that, you know, you probably won't, it's, this isn't all stuff you're going to be using all the time. Obviously you, it might be even like rarely or even never, but, uh, but you can access some of it here from the accessories menu. Um, Files again is just like this one over here. It uh, pulls up your files um, and your home folder and all that. And I'll go into that uh, here briefly, I believe, in just a moment about uh, about the home menu and, and everything. Um, you can uh, manage your fonts from here or view them rather from that one. Uh, image viewer is the default, you know, image viewing software. There's notes if you want to take some notes. So there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's an on screen keyboard. Um, if you need to use that functionality. Uh, Redshift is the one that I like to use personally. It's kind of interesting. It uh, changes the color temperature of your screen at, um, at nighttime. So it's like it takes some of the blue light out of it. And, and, um, and that's right there. You can use that by default. Um, you know, pre-installed with Linux so you don't have to go out and get it or anything. There's a screenshot tool, the basic text editor, and then, you know, so on and so forth. The second virtual keyboard that's on screen. Uh, Warpinator is a really cool one. Um, fairly recent edition, actually. Um, but I'll go into detail on that uh, in a future video. But um, but what it does is it basically makes it so you can uh, transfer files easily between Linux computers over a network. or And it also even works on Android devices, too, between uh, Linux and Android devices. So really cool, um, really handy. Uh, so, and, and it goes on through, you know, there's obviously more stuff to cover here, but um, the other thing I wanted to go through is administration and preferences because these are the two, um, aside from the, you know, system settings right here, these are where most of your uh, system related apps and functions are collected. So if you're looking to change any system settings or anything like that, uh, of course you can go in the system settings option right here. Um, and that's actually, I believe, down here, if I remember right. Yeah, you can access it from the preferences menu down here as well. Uh, but a lot of them are just immediately accessible right here. They're, they're just available between these two options. Um, so definitely check here if you're looking for any kind of uh, system settings as well. And they're, you know, they're pretty easy to find. So like the driver manager that we did in the initial uh, welcome screen section, you can access it right here. Um, there's all kinds of different things, uh, probably some things that you'll never end up even using in here. Like there's some stuff I've never used before, to be honest, uh, but it's all available here. Um, you can easily access the software manager here in case you, you know, decide you don't want the favorites of it or, or anything like that. Uh, you can just pull it from the administration section here. And um, if you need to configure anything about your printers, it's right here. Um, you know, all sorts of things like that. Um, there again is the Synaptic Package Manager. This is basically another uh, tool for um, adding software and components to your to your system besides the Software Manager. It's a little bit more 
uh, manual though then um, and you know so I'll go over that uh, in a future video though but it is there it, it, you know there's there's another tool to use if you're looking for something more specific that you need to you know configure on your system or install etc um, so the system monitor here this is a good one to mention uh, this is the equivalent of the uh, when you press Control alt delete on a Windows computer and you get to look at your task managers and see what's what uh, tasks and processes are running um, that's the system monitor is where you do that in Linux um, I don't believe the Control alt delete shortcut works in the same way on Linux but um, but if you ever need to end a process like if there's something that is kind of locking up on your computer and you know it's not 100 percent totally frozen but you can tell it needs to end the process before you can you know uh, get back to functionality uh, system monitor is where you would do that um, let me just open that up really quick here actually just to show you um, so you can see here as uh, so you can see here the system monitor and it has processes and there's all this stuff going on here it just lists whatever's going on with it and you can click on one and you can say end process if it's one that you know is uh, not functioning properly and it will warn you like hey you know uh, you might lose some data if you did this or you know and what it means is if you're you know if you were working on something or in the middle of something and it's not going to resolve properly and you forced to, to end the process then you know you, maybe you would lose something from the last time you saved whatever you were working on or, or you know that sort of thing um, but there's times when this has come in handy for me and uh, it's good to know how to get to this because it's not necessary like it was one of the things that for me at least uh, was not immediately apparent when I switched over to Linux like how do I find the, you know uh, especially since the shortcut didn't work for control alt delete like I was used to with Windows so uh, but you can also check your resources like uh, how much of your CPU is being used actively um, your memory and swap and, and things like that um, and so that's yeah, that can also be helpful if you have something that seems like it's just really bogging down your computer at the moment you can say well hey what the heck is going on you know why are you know why does it seem like my computer's running really slow right now and then you can go in here and say well, what's going on with it and, you know uh, and you can track it visually as you can see they've got this little graph going here um, and then there's a file system section for you to see uh, you know basically your different uh, drives that you have and partitions and things like that their sizes available like the total capacity versus available capacity what's being used and, and percentages so and just some more information so you can see uh, details if you need them about your system if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn even more you can find my books at books to read.com slash Jonathan that's books the number two read.com slash j-o-n-a-t-h-a-n